Hello and welcome. My name is Spiro, and in this video I'll be presenting how to effectively create external dependencies and manage deliverables using Microsoft's Portfolio and Project Management Solution, PPM for short. This functionality applies to projects that have dependencies on other projects, or project files. Yes, I said project files. Why? Because projects themselves, if they are relatively large in scope, should adhere to good work breakdown structure practices. This means that we would begin the work breakdown logically, first into well-defined phases, or iterations for that matter, as in the case with Agile projects. Doing so helps to compartmentalize the scope of projects, where it is easier to identify and manage, for instance, their inputs. That is, any deliverables that they may need to consume in order to produce the deliverables associated to their scope. So, apart from producing deliverables, a project or scope of a project may need as input, that is to consume, some other project's deliverables. We are able to model this relationship of inputs and outputs in PPM via the external dependencies and deliverables management capabilities of PPM. Doing so enable you to effectively leverage and benefit from the dynamic nature of the solution, thus saving you time in determining and updating the status of your program or programs within your portfolio, and alleviate the pitfalls and frustration. Having a good grasp of where you stand with respect to your commitments in terms of deliverables will also enable your organization and its management to make better business decisions especially with regards to making critical calls with respect to priority when new opportunities and or issues come up. External deliverables and dependency management have an important role to play in the selection, planning and manage phases of a project lifecycle. For the former and for those who have not seen it, I have prepared a video on the Portfolio Analyzer that you will find on my YouTube channel that shows the significance of establishing high-level project dependencies within the selection phase. In this following video right here, initially I will focus on the planning phase and I will go into detail on how to set up and establish external dependencies and manage deliverables on projects that the organization has committed to planning and executing. Take note, ideally, and just like Typically done for the nine knowledge areas of project management, a project management organization should establish and set forth a framework and or provide guidelines with respect to the management of dependencies and deliverables to ensure consistency and integrity. In this video, I will cover these three topics in the following order. One, I will show you how to set up external dependencies, which will help maintain scheduled dates up to date and in line with commitments. Two, followed by deliverables. Deliverables makes it possible for projects to publish their commitment dates so that downstream projects who need them or consume them can subscribe to them and thus receive alerts if approved changes occur. 3. Afterwards, I will provide some practical tips for the PMO near the end. That is, during the managed phase of a project's lifecycle, a project schedule duration regularly maintained has a tendency to expand and contract, similar to breathing. After all, projects are truly dynamic in nature. Leveraging these external dependencies and deliverables feature will definitely help the PMO with monitoring and control aspects of their interdependent projects and programs during the managed phase. Here, I will provide you with some guidance on how you and your organization can leverage these and other features to make managing large programs much more efficient and clear. I will assume that you're Already familiar with Microsoft's project ability to create default finish to start dependencies within an existing project file? So how then would one go about creating dependencies between files? Well, it's not that different except that we will need to have the project files open and read-write mode first in Microsoft Project Professional or Microsoft Project for Office 365 and inserted as sub-projects in a single file acting as a shell or master project file. I'll go ahead and open up our files within this currently blank project file. I've conveniently named my files an upstream project, the producer project, and a downstream project, the consumer of the external deliverables from the server. To insert my project files in this currently blank file, I will need the project ribbon, where we will find the insert group containing the subproject button 
and I'll click it. Then I'll find and will select and insert each of my files in turn. When doing so, we ensure that they are set up for read-write mode and the link to project checkbox is selected, which happens to be the default settings. Here we are with the upstream and downstream project inserted. The inserted projects look like any other summary task except that there is a project icon in the indicators column, tipping us that they are inserted projects. Allow me to expand the details for each of these inserted projects. Doing so reveals the upstream project has been set up with two deliverables, conveniently named scope of deliverable one and the other scope of deliverable two. The downstream project has an input section with deliverable one received and deliverable 2 received, and another section titled Body of this Project Scope, which happens to be titled Scope of Deliverable 3 and Scope of Deliverable 4. I'm expanding Scope of Deliverable 1 in the upstream project because I've created a milestone to mark the completion of the Scope of Deliverable 1, which I will select to drive the Deliverable 1 received in the downstream project. With both these tasks, selected, I will go ahead and link them, like I would any task. Control F2 is the shortcut for creating the default finish to start dependency. Once I do this, the deliverable one received will have moved 15 working days into the future away from April 4th, and so will the scope of deliverable 4 be shown to start the same 15 working days. This is because the deliverable one received was already set up with an internal dependency that's driving the scope of deliverable three's start. I've set a similar dependency between deliverable two received that's driving the scope of deliverable four. Note when details are collapsed, the dependency lines do not display. I will expand the details of scope of deliverable three and four in a moment to reveal the lines linking these tasks and so that we can confirm this. In the meantime, Allow me to zoom out to see the entire Gambar details from the beginning to end. Let's go ahead and select our other driver task, the deliverable to received, and link it to our downstream's deliverable to received milestone. Note, using a naming convention and setting up our WBS, short for work breakdown structure, will facilitate this sort of operation and it will also help to clearly communicate the different WBS elements to your stakeholders. We'll zoom out once again, given that the link operation caused the scope of deliverable threes finished to schedule later. As promised, I'll go ahead now and expand the details of scope of deliverable three and four so we can confirm that the tasks are linked in the manner I mentioned a moment ago. The physically linked network of tasks represents the dependencies between our tasks in both files. I like to call these hard dependencies in comparison to deliverables that I sometimes call soft dependencies, which I will show and tell you about a, a bit later. Now, let's continue. I want to save and commit my changes to my so-called sub-projects, my upstream and downstream projects. In this particular case, I don't really care for my master. This file served as a shell to allow me to set up my project interdependencies, so I will discard it. So the simplest way to do this is to go ahead and click close. Doing so will prompt me though about my sub-projects, the upstream and downstream projects. I will click yes to all to proceed with the intended save operation. Now allow me to open up the upstream project. I will check it out so I can make some edits. I will save a baseline here to mark this as my standing commitment. Just a small note in passing. In PPM, I can secure my baseline so that only example authorized personnel in the PMO can set them to ensure that they are not inadvertently changed. I will also use the baseline drop down button here in the bar styles group within the format ribbon to allow us to see the schedule against our baseline. This will make it much more apparent if there's a deviation or variance between what was committed and what is scheduled. 
Now, I will go ahead and simulate a change to our scope of deliverable 1 on line 3, from 5 days to 15. Notice how, with one such change, how the downstream activities are rescheduled accordingly. We can also see that the external dependencies are depicted in gray on line 7 and 14. The first one, deliverable 1 received, due to the change, has been impacted. We can hide external dependencies if we wish to limit the level of detail in our sub-projects, and hiding them does not interfere with our external dependencies and their behavior. To hide them, go to File, Options, Advanced, and deselect Show External Successors and or Predecessors in the Cross-Projects Linking Options section. Once I click OK, we'll confirm that the external successors will no longer be displayed. Moreover, I can confirm these external successors still exist and can be found even managed in the links between projects window that can be opened from the project ribbon. We can see both our external dependencies here driven by our current projects line ID 6 and 13 and the task name of our external task deliverable 1 and 2 received and the type of dependency FS for finish to start. The date percentage complete and any differences. In fact, the interface has recorded the impact given the simulated change I made in the task duration a few moments ago, from the 5 days to 15. Thus, the original date of April 22nd is listed in the difference column and the new date of the downstream external dependency of May 5th shown in the date column. Note, there are no differences with respect to deliverable 2 given I did not make any that affected it. I will come back and show you this interface and how to use it in a few moments. For now, I will simply click OK and save my changes to the upstream project. Let's open our downstream project. Well, what do you know? The links between projects comes up automatically and it picks up on and is displaying via the external predecessors tab the differences or recent schedule changes made in the upstream project. By selecting the deliverable one row, the source project, that is the upstream project is shown. Also, the accept, delete link and browse buttons are also enabled. Well, I don't want to accept these changes just yet. Also, I want to recommend that you disable this having the links between project dialog window open automatically like this, which happens to be the default. Once again, go to File, Options, Advanced, and disable the Show Links Between Project Dialog on Open. I find that there's a risk and a tendency to prematurely or inadvertently accept such changes. As I mentioned during my introduction, that project schedules have a tendency to expand and contract, similar to breathing. After all, projects are truly dynamic in nature. Nevertheless, there are standing commitments, deliverable dates, baselines, etc., that projects need and must respect. As such, the upstream project should and usually is given the opportunity to try and recover from a slippage in schedule. So unless there's a formal change request and a management approval granted, then the projects are asked to hold to their standing commitment by the PMO, client, or sponsor until instructed otherwise. Well, this is where the deliverable feature comes in. Allow me to save, close and check in this downstream project. Note, I've only changed the settings in the cross projects linking option section of the option settings advanced tab. I have not accepted the change in the upstream schedule. To set up a deliverable is as follows. Here I have the upstream project, the producer of the deliverables one and two open and I have reset my duration for that simulated task slippage for the time being. I will tag the summary tasks which happen to represent the deliverables start and finish accordingly. To do so, I'll begin with deliverable 1 which happens to be on row 1. When selected, I will click the create deliverable menu item here on the deliverable drop down in the task ribbons insert group. Notice the bronze colored cube icon that appears in the indicators column when I do this. It's that simple. Now, to perform this operation, the project file must first be published so that it has a project site to host and list the deliverables for this project. Let's flip over to the project web access, also known as PWA, and take a look at our producer's files project site deliverables page. And here it is. 
laid out in a similar fashion to what we had in Microsoft Project Pro. If you are new to the notion of project sites, I cover uh, the purpose of project sites near the end of my demand management video if you're interested in learning more. Let's do this again, but for Deliverable 2 now. Back in Microsoft Project Pro, select Deliverable 2. This is the one here on row 8. I will click the Create Deliverables menu item here on the Deliverable drop-down in the Task Ribbons Insert Group. Again, notice the bronze colored cube icon that appears in the Indicators column when I do this. Yes, it's that simple. I will flip over to our project site to see our deliverables page updated with a second deliverable listed in the upstream project site. I've also extended the splitter bar to the right a little, revealing the deliverable finish column. I've gone ahead and saved and closed my upstream producer project and open here the downstream consumer of external deliverables project file. We'll go ahead and link the deliverables we created a moment ago to this project. To do so, I will choose the Manage Dependencies item from the Deliverables menu, causing the Dependencies pane to open. It's somewhat of a misnomer, and so not to be confused with the external project dependencies that we covered earlier, which I differentiate by calling those hard dependencies, and this is why I like to call these deliverables soft dependencies. You will see why these are soft a little later. We are leading up to that part. I'll click Add New Dependency and select the Upstream Producer file from my list of projects with deliverables. It displays the two deliverables, the Upstream Producer project file. I'll select Deliverable 1 from the list, which matches the task name I had given it. And I will click the Deliverable 1 Received milestone here in the Open Downstream Consumer file. Now I will click Link to select Task and then click Done. As soon as I do this, you should notice a somewhat orange color horizontal line that is drawn to the left of our Deliverable 1 received milestone in the Gantt bar area that begins on April 4th and ends on April 22nd. There's also a dependency icon in the Indicators column. Let's do this again, but for Deliverable 2 now. Click Add New Dependency in the Dependency pane since it's still open. Select the Upstream project from the drop-down. Select the deliverable from the list. Select the deliverable to receive milestone in our downstream consumer file. Click link to select the task and then done. Notice the orange color horizontal line that is drawn to the left of our deliverable to receive milestone in the Gampar area that begins on April 4th and ends on May 5th. This too is in line with the respective deliverables duration. There's also a dependency icon in the indicators column. I have saved and closed my downstream project and I've returned to my upstream project to simulate a change in the duration like we did earlier with the external dependencies. Notice here that I formatted the Gantt bars to display the deliverable. I've modified the default pattern so that it's more apparent and visible on the screen. See the bars here in purple? The purple represents my deliverable start and finish. I'll go ahead now and change the duration of my task affecting deliverable 1 from 5 days to 15 days, just like before. Notice that the duration of the deliverable did not change. This is what I want. As I said before, only if I have the formal approvers to make the change should I go ahead and update the finish for my deliverable. Otherwise, I will do my best with corrective actions as a good project manager should to meet his or her project commitments. If it becomes apparent that this date can no longer be achieved and the PMO agrees and approves that it should be uh, set uh, to a new and realistic commitment date, only then should it be updated and this would typically include the baseline as well as the deliverable dates. To update the deliverable dates of the upstream producer file, I will select the affected deliverable, which is deliverable 1 on row 1, and then click Sync Deliverables from the Deliverable menu. Notice the purple bar extend to May 6th. Let's see the project site to see the updates there too. Yep, it's updated accordingly. Now here's the thing, when a downstream project was looking to consume deliverables, it is recommended that they set up an alert to this list of deliverables they need as input in order for them to in turn meet their respective commitments. As such, the user is presented with this SharePoint related Alert Me window which allows one to set certain comprehensive preferences. Assuming that I had set up my alert before the change in my upstream producer project or projects, such a notification would advise me to go to my downstream consumer project or projects and make the necessary updates. I've opened my downstream consumer project here. I can assure you I did not get the link to project dialog opening up automatically. 
because as you remember this is the configuration change I made and I desire so now let's act on the notification about the deliverable change to do so I go to the deliverable drop-down once again and choose manage dependency here I am alerted as well via the exclamation point to the left of the deliverable name and hovering over the deliverable will provide me its status and changes before I make the change notice that my schedule has not changed deliverable one received as a milestone on April 22nd now I'll go and click accept changes from server as soon as I do this the orange line representing the deliverable finish commitment date has been updated to reflect May 6th notice that the milestone did not get updated there's no physical dependency between the task and the deliverables this is why I call deliverables soft dependencies we could just move the milestone manually to align it accordingly to May 6th but don't do that either so let me zoom out and undo the constraint I just set manually the way to do it is to leverage the link to projects dialog window here and now notice that it displays a change in waiting given our formal confirmation notification about the date change of our deliverable from the upstream producer project we will proceed to select our deliverable from this window and click accept to the change doing so renders the appropriate results notice the milestone has been moved for us having the hard external dependency acting accordingly and on our queue this is how one should go about using this solution to tame and control projects now let's talk about our third and last topic practical tips I've gone ahead and opened the upstream producer project I inserted here deliverable finish date that is our deliverables commitment date followed by the plan finish these fields can be used to compute the variance that is the difference between these two as I have here this helps to track delays on each deliverable also in order to help bring attention to any delays and to help maintain focus on the critical path of our projects within our program or portfolio use deadlines I've added deadlines here to my two deliverables one and two on rows one and eight they are also represented graphically on the GAN portion on the right side of our view by a green down arrow having this information will indicate if I have exceeded my deadlines and by how much exceeding deadlines will put a negative duration in the total slot column this will highlight how much time is needed to be trimmed or that we need to shave off in order to realign or schedule within our sponsors expectation and or commitments the total slack of a project rolls up so that you can monitor the status of the critical path quite easily in fact adding this field to the project center views in PWA will making tracking a project a program or a portfolio's deadlines literally a cinch allowing the PMO at a glance to see who is having difficulty meeting their deadlines and jeopardizing the critical path now wouldn't that be something so allow me to simulate a change here by replacing the 15 days duration with 20 so you can observe the values that have been changed which are highlighted by Microsoft Project Pro that's it folks I hope you enjoyed my demonstration of the external dependencies and the deliverables functionality that's available with PPM please feel free to contact me if you and or your organization would like support with uh, its deliverable management strategy or any other aspect of PPM or simply looking to improve your PMO and project management performance capabilities thank you for watching